The following program is sponsored by The Eternal Church of God. Ladies and gentlemen, consider for a moment the following questions. Why is there so much animosity toward the Bible today? Why do many claim that Christianity is prejudiced and intolerant? Why do the majority of public educators teach that the Bible cannot be trusted to morally guide our lives? Is it actually possible for people to be good without God? To find out the answers to these questions, stay tuned. Greetings and great hope for a better tomorrow in the world to come. Throughout the Western world, there is a growing animosity toward the Bible. In fact, societies that once respected the Bible have now rejected its principles for their national laws. But why? How could a nation such as America, for example, that was built on biblical principles now reject a book that was once considered foundational to our national ethics? Well, there are a few reasons why this has happened. We live in a free society where people can vote and choose from a variety of lifestyles. But during the 1960s, people began to redefine liberty and freedom. A decline of moral values developed in the turn on, tune in, and drop out counterculture that propagated having an open mind toward just about anything and everything. People began to explore deviant behaviors that were once considered taboo. Millions experimented with drugs while dabbling in various forms of what they thought was spiritual enlightenment. It was thought that the 1960s brought an awakening to a world in which we were even freer than once believed. And this movement eventually led people to begin redefining what was right and wrong. Eventually, many began to question the moral authority of the Bible. And when the Bible disagreed with the behaviors some chose to enjoy, then there could be only one of two conclusions. Either the behavior was wrong, or the Bible was wrong. Despite our long history and prior understanding of morality, people began to claim that the Bible was a threat to their freedom. And therefore, many concluded that the Bible could no longer be trusted. However, this is not the truth. The freedom that America was founded on was never intended to be a freedom from the morality of the Bible. True freedom is not a separation between God and a nation comprised of moral individuals. But today, people want to deny the facts of history. They choose to reinterpret what America's founding fathers intended and change the values that made this country great. Now, since the early 1960s, there has been a steady movement to remove God and the Bible from our history. In fact, the government and many educators are literally rewriting public education's history books in an attempt to remove any connection to God and the Bible. Today, the Bible is one of the most challenged books in America. The reason is because the Bible declares without apology that it is the handbook for all humanity. And because some of the behaviors practiced by many are declared as sin in the scriptures, the only option of the liberal movement is, to, is an attempt to discredit the Bible. And without even studying it to see what the Bible says, people are misquoting, misinterpreting, and taking profound words of wisdom out of context in order to paint a picture of racism and intolerance within the scriptures. 
This is the attitude many have chosen to have. They choose to throw out the moral handbook of humanity and prefer iniquity as a viable way of life. What may not be understood by most is that this misguided path in our age is nothing new. The same scenario took place, in fact, at the very beginning. When God made the first man and woman, he allowed them to choose how they would live. And he gave them words of wisdom to live by, but he allowed a tree representing a way of life contrary to him to exist. And God encouraged Adam and Eve to choose his way, to choose the tree of life, but he made them free moral agents, and he wanted them to decide for themselves. And he did this so that people might learn from their own mistakes and see firsthand which way would be the best in the end. Now Eve, she was deceived. She believed the devil who told her that choosing his way would lead to profound wisdom. He said that by eating the forbidden fruit, her eyes would be opened, and she would be like God, knowing good and evil. Knowing in this verse does not simply mean to understand what evil is. Knowing is the Hebrew word yada, which, which means to recognize and to have respect toward a deviant way of life. That is what choosing the wrong way of life would do. It gave humanity the opportunity to make transgression a viable option. And so the first woman believed that the forbidden tree was good for food, and she saw it as pleasing to the senses a tree desirable to make her wise, and so she took of its fruit and ate. And then she gave some of the fruit to her husband, Adam, and he ate. And then the eyes of both of them were opened. Now, the majority in today's world would think that Eve made the right choice. They would say she opened their minds to accept alternative lifestyles and that this was a good thing because it would allow a broader scope of pleasure in our existence. But did this deviation truly make them wise? Does experimenting with various religions and sexual behaviors and immoral lifestyles make one wise? Or is the result confusion? Consider that society as a whole does not know which direction to go in today. We preach diversity and tolerance, but we are more intolerant of morality than ever. Thus, the agenda for the last 40 years has been to remove the Bible and its moral restrictions. The result has been choosing immorality as a viable way of life. But this twisted perspective of diversity and tolerance does not make people wise. It results in confusion, and in the end, it will result in destruction. Today, millions make choices that they think are an expression of freedom, but by choosing to disregard the moral values of the Bible, people are actually putting a restraint on their human potential. They are, in fact, eliminating a chance to become something more than we are in this world. The point is, contrary to what many believe, the Bible does not restrict true freedom. In fact, true freedom is what God desires for us to have. But this does not mean attempting to remove the moral authority of the universe. True freedom allows for us to choose God and therefore choose life. As the Bible declares, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that both you and your descendants may live, that you may love the eternal your God, that you may obey his voice, for he is your life and the length of your days. The God of the Bible is the one who declares the end from the beginning. Why, his words set the atomic structure spinning. He upholds the universe and all forms of life by his power. Why, our lives are literally in his hands. And consider that the ungodly nations of human history, they have all come to an end. The Assyrian Empire, for example, fell because of its rank evil. The Babylonians were wiped off the face of the earth. The Greek and Roman empires collapsed. The great monarchs of the Egyptian dynasties are all gone. The Aztecs, the Mayans, and many other great civilizations, they no longer exist. And the reason is because they did not respect the morality of God. Oh, you can exist for a time without God. A nation can flourish for centuries while rejecting the Bible. But ultimately, without the moral guidance of God as a compass for life, the nation will fall. As God declared, 
But it shall come to pass, if you do not obey the voice of the Eternal your God, to observe carefully all his commandments and his statutes which I command you today, that all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. The Eternal will send on you cursing, confusion, and rebuke in all that you set your hand to do, until you are destroyed and until you perish quickly because of the wickedness of your doings in which you have forsaken me. This is the direction America is headed. Why well, think about it. America was once the greatest nation on the earth, respected in the global community. Immigrants used to come to this country with a desire to integrate and be a part of something grand. However, over the last 30 years, America has turned into a country riding on the coattails of the past. We are no longer any better morally than the rest. And even many of our own citizens no longer feel that America is exceptional. And it's because America now stands for allowing any immoral lifestyle one might choose. Why we encourage gender dysphoria, homosexuality, and, and we promote adultery and fornication. Once reputable banks and institutions and even government leaders now lie and cheat the people. We allow backroom deals and sinister activity through legalized bribery in the lobbying of Congress. We claim to be diverse in beliefs and behavior, but we reject the moral beliefs and behavior outlined in the Bible. And then we wonder why we have lost respect in the global community. And it's because America has become less and less respectable. Our current claim to fame is diversity. We actually think that deviating from the Bible makes us unique, but tolerance of evil does not make us strong. It's just the opposite. The only way, in fact, to stability and prosperity is through the principles of the Bible. And God continually makes this point clear. As he said in Exodus 19, If you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people. God's covenant is found in keeping his commandments. And God considers those who obey him to be special. On the other hand, those who reject the Bible, God does not favor. And even though he sends rain on the just and the unjust, God warns us that those who continue to live contrary to his ethics will be destroyed. Why notice his admonition through the prophet Jeremiah, where he said, execute judgment and righteousness. But if you will not hear these words, I swear by myself, says the Eternal, that this house, meaning these people or this nation that chooses to reject God, shall become a desolation. These are words of warning in order to avoid calamity. Sadly, many do not want to hear these words, and they assert that the Bible is prejudiced and intolerant. But the intolerance spoken of in the Bible is not against the individual. It is against those behaviors defined as sin. And because the Bible tells us to refrain from certain activities, well, people believe that God is somehow a threat to our freedom. But the freedom to reject God is not the kind of freedom that America's founding fathers wanted for us to have. The freedom America was founded on was the freedom to choose life, to live morally as the Bible dictates without fear of persecution. But well, ladies and gentlemen, you need to understand exactly what true freedom is. And to help you, The World to Come offers a free booklet. The World to Come produces a variety of free literature to help readers understand the Bible and its various topics. Today, we would like to offer you the book titled, True Freedom. Millions of people in America and other free nations believe that freedom means we can choose our own moral values. But that is not the kind of freedom God and our forefathers intended for people to choose. You need to understand how that keeping God's commandments and limiting our behavior to that which is considered moral, according to the Bible, it actually unlocks doors of opportunity. There is no charge for our literature, no obligation, and no undesired follow-up. So stay tuned, and at the end of this program, we will show you how to receive a free copy of True Freedom. So far, we have heard about a few of the reasons many are hostile toward the Bible today. They feel that God's moral values are restrictive and therefore a threat to freedom. Because of this twisted view of what freedom truly is, deviant lifestyles are preferred over the ethics of the Bible. 
Sadly, even those who do not prefer moral deviance are being deceived into thinking that all beliefs are somehow equal and should be tolerated. Well, this leads to another reason why some claim that the Bible cannot be trusted in our modern, sophisticated age. People think that an increased level of knowledge and technology of the natural world has somehow allowed us to move past the Bible and therefore we can rightly govern ourselves without the ethics of God. In fact, many believe that it's entirely possible to be good without God. Could this be true? Is it possible for people to be good without the moral principles of the Bible? Well, the answer is no. It's not possible for anyone to be good without God. And the reason is because God already defined what good is. As King David wrote, For all your commandments are righteousness. Righteousness simply means to be in the right or good. Now, scholars and historians agree that the first books of the Bible date back more than 3,400 years, and its stories and precepts go back even further. Now, there is a continuous theme and flow of the Bible that holds fast to moral principles that were made known to humanity at the very beginning. Therefore, while it may be possible for some to do something that the Bible considers good without worshiping God, the only reason we know what is good is because it has been predefined for us in the scriptures. Any moral values that anyone has have been borrowed from the author who inspired the original good book. Why well, notice what the Apostle Paul wrote in this regard. He said, I would not have known sin except through the law. For I would not have known covetousness unless the law had said, you shall not covet. And so contrary to what many believe, God's law that is written, explained, and exampled throughout the historical narrative of the Bible defines what good and evil is. And thus the only way a behavior can be deemed good is by comparing it to biblical principles. And therefore, the moral values that most people claim to be good in America, they are only understood because we are a nation that was founded and built upon biblical principles. And for hundreds of years, the Bible enhanced and affected families and neighborhoods, cities, states, and country. If people were not born and raised in this God-respecting environment, they would not understand true definitions of good and evil. Why, to uneducated people, good is whatever makes them feel good, whether it's moral or not. To tribes in the deepest jungles of Africa, good might be cutting off people's heads and turning them into decorations. And this primitive perspective of good is exactly what we see happening in our so-called modern, sophisticated society. Why is it any wonder we see so many tribal-looking tattoos and piercings today? In our supposed sophistication, we are actually regressing instead of progressing. Even though knowledge has increased in the last 200 years, we see that wisdom and prudence has widely not been the result. And the evidence is found in the fact that people are trying to redefine good and evil. The liberal agenda presumptuously promotes the idea that America can no longer trust the Bible. Even our president today, Barack Obama, mocked the Bible, saying it was unfit for use in government. But notice what one of the most admired presidents in this country's history said about God in a national address. Without God, there is no virtue because there's no prompting of the conscience. Without God, we're mired in the material, that flat world that tells us only what the senses perceive. Without God, there is a coarsening of the society. And without God, democracy will not and cannot long endure. If we ever forget that we're one nation under God, then we will be a nation gone under. That, my friends, is where we are headed. We are a nation that was ordained to be under God, but we are now coarse and sinking in the mire of debauchery. Corruption is rampant in commerce and in government, and even the Constitution is being questioned today as democracy is beginning to fail. Why, the Founding Fathers of America would be rolling over in their graves if they could know what the people have done with the freedom they sacrificed so much for us to have. Why, listen to what Founding Father John Adams wrote while well, considering that people might possibly turn from biblical standards. Posterity. You will never know how much it cost the present generation to preserve your freedom. I hope you will make good use of it. 
If you do not, I shall repent in heaven that I ever took half the pains to preserve it. Ladies and gentlemen, if John Adams knew what America has done with the freedom that he and thousands of others gave their lives to defend, he would repent of his efforts to keep America free. In other words, he would have preferred we live in tyranny and respect God than to misuse freedom and reject biblical morality. And that is what we see happening today, a gross misuse of freedom. It's widely asserted that the Bible cannot be trusted in our age, but God's morals can be trusted in this and every age. They are timeless ethics that have rung through the ages with enduring moral principles. And this leads to another reason for the animosity toward the Bible. It's because people do not even know what it says. Why, the majority has not even read the Bible, and yet they reject it while having a lack of knowledge. This was not always so. For more than 150 years, America respected the Bible as a profound, far-reaching document. And the enduring moral principles within its pages were widely understood because we were a nation that read the book. But today, most do not even know what the Bible says. They misquote it, they misinterpret it, and they take statements out of context, and they rely on somebody else's bias misinterpretation without proving it for themselves. And this lack of understanding will contribute to our destruction. Notice what God said to Israel after they left off knowing his ethics and they turned to their own understanding. He said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you. Because you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. A lack of knowledge comes from not thoughtfully considering what the good book says. And let me ask you today, have you read the Bible? Do you understand the Bible's message? Do you even want to know what it says? Or would you rather enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season and later be destroyed? Well, perhaps this lack of biblical knowledge today is fear-driven because, you know, if you look it up and you discover that the Bible is in fact right, well, now you are obligated to do something about it. And the point is, all moral values actually came from God. The heart of men and women has no moral compass of itself. And contrary to what is taught today and what you might think, people are not inherently good. It's just the opposite. The Bible even tells us that the carnal mind is enmity with God and the heart is deceitful and wicked. Without conscious efforts to do good, people tend to evil, not to good. And this leads, in fact, to a paradox of our age. At a time when mankind has more information than ever, we still lack the wisdom that would enable us to solve our many problems. Why? Well, the answer is that it's not the quantity of information that matters, it's the quality of information. The information must be accurate physically, but it must also be honest and accurate morally. And so people would love to know how to solve world hunger and, and disease and, and to stop natural disasters that devastate the planet, but they cannot know. And the reason is because the majorities are looking in the wrong place for this information. They refuse to consult the Bible. And it's because they are being told that the Bible cannot be trusted. Educators widely reject God and they teach evolution. And some of the most highly educated people in the world are often the most ignorant about what is truly important in life. This is the paradox of our age, an explosion of knowledge with a lack of wisdom. This too is addressed in the Bible. And the Bible states that this is a sign of the end time. Notice how the Apostle Paul aptly described our society. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, that means thinking they are good, but denying his power. Don't these descriptive terms mirror our world today? 
why we live in a corrupt culture, one obsessed with self-oriented thinking and putting pleasures of the flesh first and foremost. We live in a country that thinks very highly of itself while we decrease morally and economically. Why the world we live in is systematically degenerating in a steady decline of Western civilization. Behavior that was abhorred and unheard of only 50 years ago is commonplace today. Intimate behavior that was once reserved for marriage is now published for all to see. Evildoers are becoming more and more evil, and that which was once deemed morally unacceptable is now embraced by millions. But there is information available that can show us where we are wrong and how you can be right. The Bible stands as the greatest book in human history. It's been published in more than 2,000 languages and dialects. Sadly, many do not even know what this book says, and they simply accept a godless liberal agenda's inference and interpretation of terms that even they don't understand. So don't believe the hype that we can be good without God. That is simply not true. And, in fact, don't believe me. Prove it for yourself. Believe the Bible. Open up the good book and see for yourself what it says and what it does not say. Don't be intimidated by those who have a lack of knowledge and they have an agenda. You can study the Bible and you can understand its message. And to help you in your endeavors, The World to Come is offering two informative booklets free of charge. The World to Come produces a variety of free literature to help readers understand what the Bible truly says about various topics. Today we would like to offer you True Freedom and Read the Book. Millions of people in America and other free nations believe that freedom means we can do pretty much whatever we want, whether it's considered moral or not. But that is not the kind of freedom God and our forefathers intended for people to choose. True freedom is found in the transcendent human potential and choosing life. Everyone should understand this truth, and the answer is found within the pages of the Bible. In addition, some might consider the Bible to be intimidating. You know, perhaps you think it's too large of a work or, or too hard to understand. But our free booklet will show you how you can study the Bible and you can know what it says. Why the Bible is the most important book of human history and you need to be acquainted with what God has planned for the world to come. There is no charge for our literature, no obligation, and no undesired follow-up. So stay tuned, and in just a few moments, we will show you how to receive your free copies of True Freedom and read the book. Until next time, this is Terry Moore for The World to Come saying, thanks for watching. Thank you for watching The World to Come. If you would like the literature offered on today's program, please contact The World to Come. P.O. Box 80248, Billings, Montana, 59108. You may also call us toll-free at 1-800-723-6108 or email us at witness at eternalcog.org. No one knows the day or hour when the end shall come to pass. Not the angels that dwell